everybody. Uh, we do try to every morning um, answer some questions. It's amazing how fast 30 minutes goes though. Uh, but if you do have something, kind of hang on to that and feel free to ask us. Uh, what we were actually gonna uh, use as a topic today to hopefully really help you is uh, how one thing affects another. Like we're gonna talk about your body posture when you're riding. And everybody knows, of course, when you're sitting on the horse and you're loping around behind a, a machine that pretty easy as you're loping around to keep your body position and then keep your swing in the right spot. But when you start speeding up coming out of the box or coming into the corner or slowing down, that's a lot of times when our body posture messes up on us. And then that's where our, sh our swing will shorten or we'll get to sitting back. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Go ahead. Yeah, and what he, like what to me body posture does heading is it affects the angle of your swing and where your tip's at. And it's really important, because to me the most important thing to heading is your swing. If you got a good swing, catching the horns is easy. If you got a fouled up swing, catching the horns is hard. But it all does tie into your body posture first. Uh, I was gonna demonstrate a little bit what would happen roping the dummy and what it does in relationship to your tip if you're leaned over too much that 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 affects your loop more than anything if you're leaned over too much now if you're leaned back too much that affects your riding ability and the way your horse is going to go it won't affect your rope and as it'll affect your rope and as much as you won't be able to ride your horses as, as aggressive as you would like to but leaning over too much is really de detrimental to your to your swing I'll do it right okay Yeah, Clay, what he's doing is demonstrating what normal, what you would be wanting. You see how, see where his tip is at, the angle of his swing, where his shoulder's at. Kind of watch, see where his hips, his hips are. Um, now, now if he, uh, like he's talking about coming out, a lot of times the guys really hustling their horse, they'll kind of give up their body posture a little bit too much. And what, like Clay was saying, is like by doing that, that drops, drops the end of your swing down quite a bit. Right. You guys see what he was talking about as far as his angle? You know, that's, that's the thing about when you're reaching, you have to make sure that tip of that rope is up over the horns. And that same swing that you take, if you get really close and you're low, you're fine with that angle, but as you back up and that, that tip stays down, you're, you're not gonna catch. You're gonna end up trying to raise the tip on the last swing and you'll end up hitting behind that right horn generally. Do you guys see what he was doing there? By, by being back, and, and roping is so much uh, angles. The pitch of your rope, the angle of your rope, and, and, and that, it just start working your way back. It's all caused by where your shoulder is, how much you're bending at the waist, where, where your feet are. Uh, this is something I find myself constantly talking about at the clinics, but uh, almost every great horse trainer agrees that heels should be under hips and hips should be under shoulders. I mean, that way you can just draw a line right down through your, your shoulders and your heels. But we're all tempted, I mean all of us, especially the taller guys like us, is leaning over and getting your feet back behind that, that back cinch a little bit. And when you do, you end up getting your shoulders too far forward. And then a lot of time we'll shorten our swing up and it just totally messes up your delivery. See how he's, uh, he's trying to maintain his swing while he's backing up. Maybe walk into it and back up once, Clay. See how he's maintaining that angle and that pitch? It's like, I, I do this at the schools a lot of times too, is I'll have somebody walk up and then back up and I'll tell them, okay, that tip needs to be right in here and the angle flat. And then as he's walking back, you watch these kids at the dummy rope, and the ones that catch that dummy from a long ways back, 
that they'll have those those same principles fall true and uh, it's amazing speaking of little kids is how they get to watching all these guys and they can just emulate them and the mechanics of their swing are so good even at five and six years old see what he was saying there is about like say hustling your horse leaning over dropping that tip just a little bit it just totally messes up uh, your reaching you know a lot of times what we probably see more than anything with uh, normal jackpot rope is when a steer moves off to the right maybe kind of show them there because it's the same principle when that steer moves out it leaves that tip to the left of that right horn and you have to you have to follow that right horn with that tip, meaning... I'll open my swing up a little bit and go get it. Yeah, you hear what he's saying? He said, when that steer moves off to the right, he'll open that swing up and go after that right horn. Going after that right horn, meaning it's like, <clears throat> as that steer moves away from you, where that tip was here, now it's over here. And you can't make your horse, or you can't force your rope to go to the right, or, and you can't force it to go up. But uh, as he's moving, if he's over here, he's trying to move his horse over. But, but as he's doing that, he moves his getting a little stuff going on here with these microphones. <clears throat> I was, I was going to show you also. It's the same pretty much the same thing in, in healing. Um, your, your body posture, there's a couple things I'll mention here, <clears throat> healing that, uh, for me, just over the years, I've been, a, I've been a leaner. I've been, you know, I'm 6'4", and didn't have a lot of coaching when I was younger, and I just kinda, I did the best I knew how, put it that way, and there wasn't that much information out when in my 20s or whatever. And uh, so I did like a lot of leaning. And uh, ever since then, you know, I had 30 year career, the last 20 years of my career, I've really been working on trying to get my body posture correct. And w like a good swing for a healer, I feel like, or in body posture is a little bit of bend. Same deal, you can see where my tip is breaking over the middle of his back right there. And then it just makes it real easy for coming out of that level swing and where it's breaking over it makes it really easy for my delivery. So when I'm roping the dummy, I always practice holding really, really still and not moving around. The only thing's moving is my arm. And here's a, this is something that'll sound funny, but should you sit up straight going down the arena, try to sit up straight. I've heard people coach and say that a lot and what kind of what I, what I think that happens is hardly anybody can sit perfectly straight when they heal. I mean, when I'm talking just straight up. So a little bit of bend, kind of given up to the fact that almost everybody wants to be over a little bit. Don't try to sit straight going down the arena because what it does is when you come into the corner and you're coming into the corner of the steer and you're trying to get a little bit comfortable and make that swing comfortable, well then now you're actually telling your horse, you're telegraphing a signal to him. You're trying to get comfortable with your body posture and then he's, he's feeling that. So what I, what I teach or feel like is right is, is lean as much as you're gonna lean and then hold really still. So like for me it would be, I lean just a little bit and then I just try to freeze and I don't lean anymore or try not to. And unless it's on my delivery and I need to bend over a little bit more, that's when I'll lean. But a horse won't, a horse won't know there's any cue to stop if you hold still. And especially when you're using your legs and you're pushing into your delivery. But if you're coming around there trying to get comfortable with your body posture, he's feeling that every jump, okay? So what we were talking about as far as helping that you know, I'm, I'm sure all of you know about, okay, my body posture is important, it affects my swing. But like with a, a sled, 
I think if you'll start creating scenarios to where, uh, like Clay, maybe tell him a little bit at home, he invented a little deal for himself where he builds a box at the end of the arena and brings the Smarty around behind it. And I mean, he's going full blast and he practices riding across there and trying to keep his body posture up and being able to set his swing up so that he can reach coming out of the box. Yeah, that, that's what I did at my house. Uh, just like those boxes here, just imagine the chute's not there and there's a little gap in between. What I do is I just pull the four-wheeler behind me so it's when it shoots past me, it's like a steer leaving the chute. And to me, that made it feel realistic to like, it shot by me, I had to score a little bit to a spot that I, I would put a spot out there that I wanted to see uh, the dummy to. And then I would just reach like I was, you know, on a normal steer just working on my rope. And then it, what it did for me is it gave me the realistic go that you feel when a steer leaves the chute running, or you can go slow or fast. But what I was gonna say a little bit too is, the, the riding is huge to be able to keep your horse working good. If you can't ride very good, they basically can do what they want to you. If you can use your legs, and, and to me, that's where repetition to me is good, and making those, like we said, you said it's pretty easy to do when you go slow on the on Smarty or whatever machine. It's hard to go when you go fast. It, and so you, if it is feeling too easy, what we encourage you to do is challenge yourself, speed it up. We're not talking, you know, flip it over and go crazy, but speed it up to where it is hard, and that's what I try to do. Well, okay, now I've got this down. Now speed it up, because I've had people people tell me at schools when they're uh, we'll, we'll go slow for a while, and they're like, "Well, I'm catching every one," and I'm like, "Well, that's good. You should. So would I." But now speed it up. So if it's easy for you to do, make it a little bit harder. Yeah, and the deal of, of where I think most people make mistakes roping sleds is they. They go about 10 miles an hour at a nice slow lope and they get to where, yeah, they're catching it good and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready, let's rope steers. And they go from 10 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour and then everything falls apart. And you know, wisdom is go 10 miles an hour and then 12 miles an hour and 14. Well, find out where your speed is. I bet every single person in here has a, a different speed. I mean, not everybody is at 15 miles an hour. Some people can, with enough coaching and doing it right, you, you can come around and execute your fundamentals all really good, maybe at 10 miles an hour, and then you gotta see what a little bit of speed does to you. And it's amazing how the anticipation in your horse's mind, your mind, leaning over, shortening your swing, uh, not using your legs, as you start speeding up two miles an hour, and that's what I've been encouraging people is about two miles an hour to, to speed up and then see what happens to the horse. You can take like a young horse and just two miles an hour, you can just watch how he, the anxiety comes up in him and you can give it to him a few runs and then back him back off and see him relax again. And I think that's more of the proper way with horses or people is to gradually go up. But, but don't get satisfied with that certain thing. Get out of your comfort zone and keep challenging yourself because when you, when you go to a, a roping, you're gonna draw that slick black steer that shoots down the arena and you're gonna be intimidated. Well, and that's when I think I started getting better because how many of you guys are out there, you go to, you, when you're practicing, it feels pretty easy and then you go to the roping and it feels hard. Anybody out there like that? I was the only one or there's a couple. Well, it was that way for me and then when I started practicing harder, made the situations harder than it's actually gonna be at the rope in a rodeo, I reversed it. I'd let the steers out farther. I would reach farther. I would do different things to make it to where now when I went to the rodeo or jackpot, now it, easy, it felt easier than it did before. And the other way, I was like, well, I was, probably had slow steers and was making it easy practice. And then you go to the rope and the steers run are fresh and wasn't prepared. So I switched it around. I went the other way. Tried to rope fresher steers. Tried to see them out there farther. Challenged myself that way. So when I went to the rope and it felt easy. Yeah. Do you, you guys all hear what he said? I think that's worth repeating because it's so important because every one of us is guilty of getting comfortable and get a herd of steers that are just kind of nice old um, mid-range steers and we're making good runs on them. We feel confident, our horses feel good. But then you go off to the rope and then the cattle are a little bit fresher, run a little harder. I mean, and just from up here right down through everything, it just, it's harder and it, it, it can be the other way. 
even the national finals, these guys, they practice in exactly the same uh, dimension of an arena. They try to have the same kind of cattle. I mean, I've made mistakes in, in preparing for the NFR before of having like a small arena, but yet pretty nice cattle. And then get over here and the cattle are a little bit stronger and it's a whole different deal. And it, and it feels like a lot harder. The start's getting there quicker. I can't get out to the end of the, the I can't get out and get around the steer uh, because I hadn't been practicing that. I heard Walt Woodard say that the first year that he came back and he was telling me, he goes, I just couldn't believe how hard it was to get out of the box and get out there and get a decent shot. I mean, and then I thought about it all year and, and worked on it all year and the next year I was ready. Yeah, that's that's very true. People at the NFR don't think the steers run. I mean, we don't have to see nothing. Some of them really run. If you'd had to see tail the pin on some of these, I mean, they they're getting it pretty good, I think. Yeah, it it's a little bit harder from where he was sitting than where I've been sitting. Yeah, isn't, uh, isn't that right? <laughs> Looks easy where we're at. But I did. I had a guy. I was walking a trade show yesterday, and a guy was saying, he goes, you know what? I I thought you guys were roping bad until uh, our seats were right behind the box last night and I've seen actually how fast it happens. He goes, it looks really hard. And I go, well, it's not really hard, but it happens really fast. And so sometimes when yeah. it happens that fast, I mean, mistakes happen, but he was shocked. He got his seats right behind the head and box and he was just in shock at how fast we actually let go of the rope. And TV doesn't even really show it because when you're ground level or from yeah. behind, I've seen a few spins right in front of me where you're like, that. that's the fastest run I've ever seen. Like, it looks like they're throwing where you don't even know where the steer is going to be at. And then the head rope goes on, he turns, and hopefully your healer dallies. I mean, it happens so fast. Yeah. And I thought that was cool of him to say. He come to me and said, man, I didn't think you guys were roping that good. And then our seats were right behind the head box. And, man, that looked good, you know. So Yeah. I can, rem I can remember certain go-rounds back there that, that is so tough. And you're sitting there, and you're watching it all happen, and it's happening so fast that, I can honestly remember looking over at my partner and smiling and kind of doing that, you know, almost to say, hey, we, we just got to give it everything we got. I mean, the first good shot you got, if he's even halfway good in the corner, man, I'm coming with it. I mean, you just know the writing's on the wall and there's no, you just don't have that time to take that extra swing or whatever. But honestly, it's fun. It's fun to be the best you can be like that. But, but a lot of go-rounds also, um, you still need to be smart. I mean, I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah that that's here. why the average is huge here. If you're good in the average, I've told people, they're like, I've been in the average, lead the average a couple of times, they're like, man, that must be hard to rope. And I was like, that's the easiest time to rope because I'm not scared to break the barrier because it doesn't take me out and just get a good start every time. And almost, I wasn't pigeonholed. Like right now, I'm in a situation where the average means nothing. And if the round's tough, I got to keep doing it no matter what steer I got. No matter if I get a bad go or stuff's happening, I've got to make it happen myself because I need to win that night. Whereas if you're in the average, stuff goes a little bit bad, you can go for the catch and still be in it. But, but you know what's interesting? If, I, if, if you could slow it down, what Clay's going to try to do tonight and tomorrow, even though he knows he's got to be spin two steers to be three, he's still going to go through those steps to ride his horse, I mean, there's steps to where you don't get ahead of yourself and you start thinking about leaning a little bit early, picking your rope up too early. You have to go through a step-by-step -step process, even when you're being three, and you'll see when they do it really good that they're not giving up their body posture, they're seeing their start, they're riding as hard as they can, and they're not getting ahead of their self. And there's really, there's no, no need to be thinking about pulling the trigger until they pull the trigger. And Clay will probably tell you as far as heading goes, that's where they get in trouble as they start thinking about turning them so fast that they don't ride their horse across the line that second or third stride. Uh, yeah, it happened to me a little bit last night. I mean, I left a little early and I knew it and I pulled and I kind of let off on my swing. My, I was just a little bit messed up with the timing of everything, so I didn't have much speed on it. So not, now I'm pulling. And then my steer just eased out and then he kind of runs. So I pulled all the way line, I have no momentum. And now I kind of let off because my timing's wrong. And my horse is a little bit tight because it's round eight and I've been going at him since, you know, round three. And, uh, you know, and just by my, me not riding him aggressive enough, that split second just made it a little bit harder to dally and I dang near lost my rope. And I mean, that happens, you know, 
I had to throw it, but yet, I mean, I know why. So tonight, I'm going to try to do it a little bit better where I, I'm not pulling him across the line where I'm actually getting him more because he can really run. But no matter how fast your horse can run, if you just pull him all the way to the barrier and then throw from that, he has no momentum to go forward either. I mean, he's going to want to, you know, step out or get a little bit tight himself. So tonight, what my plan is is to, I mean, I got to get a good start, but make sure I, I let him run across there, and that'll actually help keep speed on my swing which will actually help him, or not, or I should say not let him know when I'm actually going to throw it, and that should help me. So look for that tonight if you guys are watching. But as far as you said, being three, when you know you got to be three, you got to, I woke up this morning thinking about three, so <laughs> I got three on the brain. Did you guys follow him through all that, what he's going to be doing in those, well, it's actually not three seconds. It, what's amazing. Well, I got about point. Yeah. Two? I don't know. I don't get much time. That's why you guys healers have the advantage. When we nod, it's over. You guys at least get a couple swings. I know. I couldn't believe that when I would see that. Sometimes you see pictures of us coming in there to heal, and there's like .8 on the... Yeah. They've already got them roped, and I'm... I have a that point. When I was 3'6", right. I seen the picture. I don't know if somebody put it on Facebook or something. <laughs> I am pulling my slack about to dally on point three. It's already on the horns, and I mean... So just take your stopwatch out and do that like that. And, and that's where it all goes back to, I know we're not really trying to tie it in, or I'm not, but to where it's, it's muscle memory. And the only way you do that is by doing it a lot, whether it's on Smarty, the rope and dummy, or rope and steers. I mean, there's no other way. When you're doing it in point three, there, you're not seeing much. It's reaction to yeah. what you need to be, you can't fix it when you get here. You needed to be good before you got here to be able or, to Or even it. on, even on fast steers, just roping to be roping. It just, it goes so fast that it, it is really hard to correct and really break down and isolate things and fix them. I mean, to really isolate and fix things, you got to slow down so that you can consciously think through it and program your subconscious. And then you can go ahead and speed up and have a chance to do it over and over again. Yeah. You guys we, got any questions? I don't know. We always run yeah, out of time. Yeah, we got time for maybe one or two questions. What's a perfect angle leaving the chute heading? You're talking about with your swing or your body? I, I, I don't know what, how would you say. I would say just a little bit past center. I mean, how many of us have got rock, by, rock back and then... Uh, kind of have a, I don't know the way to say it, but rear to saddle fight, where you slap the saddle a few times, I call it, but that's when your horse gets ahead of you and you get rocked back, but I just try to, I try to go with my horse, and, and that's kind of hard to explain, I kind of talked about it a little bit the other day, is when he leaves, I let my body go with him at the same time, and that okay, gives me just minutes. a little bit, so I can take the force of him leaving, I got to be a little bit bent over, but not much. I'm not down here like this because if it does, it just drops my tip down and it ain't going on. I mean, it's, and if it does, it'll skip on the horn. So I try to just stay with him, sit up straight enough where my tip is above the horn so I can reach, but yet not set back too straight up to where it's kind of throwing me back and I'm not, not able to ride my horse. Maybe turn sideways that way. Let me have your microphone and swing and uh, hopefully this will even help you that much more. But coming out of the box, about how much, what's the furthest you'd be leaning over c coming out? We, we use the clock analogy a lot, like 12 o'clock being 12, you know, straight up. 11 o'clock would be about as far as he'd go, and I, I think that's about the same with me healing. I try not to get over past about 11 o'clock. Yeah, uh, the being what he talked about the power point or the center of the horse. If if you're not ahead a little bit and have your legs and down sitting down in your legs and have your stirrups to where you can stay ahead of that horse, he will blow you back. And not only the reason that people get blown back is because that they're they're loose in their legs and not really strong. And I I, I find myself constantly talking a lot about get strong in the saddle, get strong in the saddle, and I'll come back by, behind someone, grab the back of their shirt, and I'll tell them, swing your rope like you're going to rope. 
and I'll grab the back of their shirt and pull back and almost everybody will get rocked back. And I'm like, no, you gotta be a lot stronger than that. You gotta be strong here and here with your core. It's like, get strong so that if I'm pulling on the back of your shirt, you can't, I even uh, put a rope around a couple times and I had a 250 pound guy trying to, I mean, we were doing it kind of for fun, but he's trying to drag behind me and I had a swing and I was like, try to make me bring my tip up. And I was able to drag him along like that. I mean, that's how strong that your legs and your, your, um, your uh, core strength can be coming around. And that's, that's impressive. Well, you been on P90X or what else? <laughs> no, you can tell I'm not, no. I know I'm not. <laughs> I was gonna say something. I'll try to make a funny deal. I don't know if you guys seen me, oh, the year I won the world, here I am telling y'all how I sit up straight and do everything right. I hope it's not coming across that way because I was up, I w won the go-round with Chad Masters and um, I was riding Michael Jones's little buckskin horse and he uh, usually runs the run, talks about it, you know, and compliments folks, or whatever, gives you your buckle. quick. So anyway, they, then he uh, talks to Chad, then he rewinds it. And if you guys remember, that horse stopped so hard that I was laying over and I swear my feet were straight behind me and I was over like that. And I was like, whatever that is, nine o'clock and three o'clock. <laughs> and somehow or another, I got back to the horn. We won the day money. The kids call it, what is it, planking nowadays where you just lay out? That's how it looked like he was planking. Just oh, flat man. out. My horsemanship I, I went right it. up. I remember it. Oh, I, I think, think we every, made fun of you a little bit out uh, back the next night. I'm but, sure everybody in America <laughs> made fun of me. I did get the buckle, though. Yeah. You can't make fun of that too much. Uh -huh. uh, one more question, we probably better quit. Anybody? What angle do you want your rope hitting at? Or coming in, whenever it hits the leg, how do you want your rope standing? This, this is a question. He was asking, what angle do you want your loop to come in at? And just. Probably the most controversial thing that there is in healing, maybe, but the, the way I've always done it, uh, Leo Camarillo, I went to his school and he showed me this, and I, I never changed it. Uh, Clay Cooper does it. All, all, Patrick Smith does this. Almost all of us guys that rope for a living do that. Meaning, you see where my hand is here? Where I've always thought of it is like, if this is a tennis racket in my hand right here, it's, it's open, right? So I'm coming from right here on my, coming around into my delivery. I keep following this line down. And if there was no strings in this tennis racket, I could just put it that the bottom of that right leg right in my tennis racket. But if I turn the racket flat, what happens? My bottom strand comes up. So it's been easy for me to always catch that right leg because I've always understood it that way. Uh, it's, it's important to get a good mental picture of the way something really happens. That's why watching, watching, uh, go, watching uh, videos is real important, slow motion, still pause it. But when you see like pictures, like in Spin to Win and Super Looper, where do you Oops, see our I hand? Do you see you it know here or you here? Left your classic ropes. It's, it's always in like the this. Zero limit booth. But that's after we've let go of it. And paid the camera for, can't hardly you catch your hand in that position. It's always three like classic that. Ropes. And you left them. In have the you guys ever thrown a loop like this right there, here? So go check that out. Yeah, and when, when I said because I hear that all a lot too, because I've taught some healing myself, I can actually catch her once in a while. Is when you're slow most, like if you have slow motion on it, like a major roping or a rodeo watch the delivery they're starting their delivery back here and so their hands open up like that and like you said the the picture's always taken here but i mean watch it open up back here and then they turn it over to get their slack yeah so. it's real deceptive and i try to break the delivery down for people to where they realize that okay there's part one like a guy that ties on he's done he can just go right here and just pull his slack but like us dallying, now we've got to go ahead and roll our hand over and pull our slack, okay? But if we start rolling our hand over too early, that's what di disturbs your loop. So the best way to get over that is to, to rope the dummy a lot and keep your hand in this position right here. And that's what I think about, like, rope control is, is, is roping the dummy, roping the sled. 
because it, you don't want your rope to be a foreign object. You know, there's some things that I don't do very good that, I mean, it's because I don't do it a lot and it just doesn't feel natural to me. And that's where like kids, have, everybody says kids have the advantage. Well, they've just been doing it so much and they just have rope in their, you know, I got two boys and that's, they just got a rope in their hand all day. They don't even, I could, I'll ask them at what age you learn how to feed it. They will have no idea. I mean, two. So when you, when you didn't grow up roping, you got to get it in your hand a little bit. That's why rope in the machine is good. The repetition makes it not a foreign object.